Hi guys, it's been a while since I've done a video. Um, my husband has been off work and we've um, just been doing things as a family and just hanging out. And But we've been watching what's going on in this world in the Middle East and Israel and all the many things, you know. And um, I was thinking the other day on the passage, which I don't have the reference with me, but it says, those who are dead in Christ shall rise first, right? And then it says, those um, who are alive and remain shall be caught up into the air with them, right? Well, I was thinking about the other views of the um, tribulation. And there's like three other views, I think, or more regarding post-trib and mid-trib and partial rapture and um, pre-wrath. You know, there's several different views. And um, I was thinking about that and I was thinking, you know, um, if that scripture read, those who are in dead in Christ shall rise first and meet the Lord in the air. And then those who are alive and remain will be here to um, continue being on this planet during the worst time in history. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that we're going to remain here on the earth. It doesn't. It says we will be caught up. And you would have to completely disregard this verse in order to believe in any of the other um views and uh, I noticed I noticed that the pre-trib view is the one that gets picked on all the time and to me that says a lot because usually the enemy will go against the thing that is the most true you know <laughs> and um, so then I was just thinking about it and I was like well you know if I was believing what they're believing I would be hoping I died before the tribulation because I wouldn't have to go through it and it's just kind of one of those things. It's like, we're not supposed to long for death. That's not our blessed hope. So I just got thinking about it and it just really bothers me <laughs> that there's so many out there getting confused and twisted. I mean, I've watched some videos of some people who seem to be pre-trib and now suddenly they've changed their view to pre-wrath or, or whatever because they've been listening to a bunch of people talk on online and and not searching the scripture I guess and some of them say that they they feel very confident in their view and that they've searched the scripture and they, I'm like that's fine if that's what you want to believe but that to me is not hopeful it doesn't provide hope in any way and it doesn't bless the heart of the believer to think that we choose Christ but he's going to allow us to suffer through the worst time in history and um, for what reason? Because it doesn't say we're going to be alive and remain to be here as witnesses for those on the earth who are who are lost. It doesn't say that. And I think it would say that if that's what was the case. It says we will be caught up in the air. And so that has just been on my heart. And also I was thinking about this. I don't know that this is true, but I get the impression that many of the people who do believe the other views also come from a background of works because in order to be believe that you're going to be here you have to believe that somehow you are going to be able to um, withstand everything that comes during the tribulation and you're going to have to endure to the end that's what they use that endure to the end and and a lot of them I noticed also pretty much wish on their brother and sister ill they'll make comments that say I'm sorry that you're going to have to find out the hard way I hope you have enough faith not to take the mark of the beast that is that is the kind of comments I get from people like that and I'm like there's no love no joy in that no peace in that no um, comfort for the believer it's simply I know because you believe you're going to escape the tribulation you are going to therefore not have enough faith to endure when the enemy persecutes you 
and you're probably going to take the mark of the beast rather than be beheaded. I've heard that from them. They've said that to my face and it's insulting. <laughs> really, It's like you think that I don't have enough belief that if I did somehow get persecuted and was to be um, told that I had to die for my faith, then I wouldn't do it. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. And it's a really poor argument. There's no scripture behind it. And it's rude. They just say rude comments and no, no scripture, no love for the person that they're talking to. Um, a lot of pride. I'm getting a lot of pride from people who, who respond to me in that way, um, on their ability. Somehow they're going to be better at withstanding the enemy than I would be. It just doesn't make any sense. It says we have authority over the enemy. And um, if we're here, <laughs> then we'll have authority over him. And it just doesn't make any sense that we would be here. Because we would be telling everybody, this is not, we can't do this, don't do this, you know. And we would be coming against him at every turn, you know. Those were just some thoughts I was having, and I mean, I could be wrong about people being in the works doctrine, but it seems like it's a very works-oriented idea, and um, you have to somehow, by your own merit, be able to maintain your faith during the tribulation, but that has nothing to do with how salvation works. And they're basically saying you have the ability to get the mark of the beast if you're already sealed with the Holy Spirit. I don't see that as a possibility because you're already promised to the Lord. You're his inheritance. You're part of his kingdom. You think the Lord's going to allow you to suddenly be ripped from his kingdom because you took some mark? Because they forced you to take a mark? You're just not going to be here. <laughs> That's all there is to it. You're already sealed with the promise of, of redemption. And people keep leaving out the Holy Spirit. And also, I think those views, they don't even look at the, they don't even look at the verse about, you know, the Antichrist coming on the scene and how it says, um, but he that restraineth restrains until, you know, I don't have my scripture verses. I'm sorry. I don't have my references and I'm paraphrasing. He that restraineth us restrains until, you know, so I believe that's the Holy Spirit living in us. And when he goes, we go because we're sealed with him and he is in us and he's part of us and he's not ever going to leave us or forsake us. He will never leave our side. He will never, we will never be without the Holy Spirit. So those were just some thoughts I was having. Um, I know I've said it before. It's like, if this were so, if it was so that we were going to be here during the tribulation, why wouldn't I just want to be dead now knowing that if I continue in the next <laughs> even few months, this world is going to implode upon itself and <laughs> I have to be here for it. So if I can die now, Lord, just take me now, you know. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't make any sense. So I I wanted to put that out there to who any to whoever is listening. Um, it just uh, Dr. Andy Woods does really good teachings on the rapture. He did a whole series going through all the different views and presenting their views and why it doesn't line up with scripture. And I believe it's the best teaching I've seen so far as far as like details. Um, but also Pastor J.D. Farag, he's very good at presenting why it's a pre-tribulation rapture. So if you're still on the fence and confused, but whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. If you are sealed with the promise, with the Holy Spirit, you're going with us <laughs> and you can be surprised in heaven. That's okay. But going around and telling people who do believe in pre-tribulation rapture that you feel sorry for them, that they're going to, they're going to suffer and that they're going to probably take the mark of the beast and then suffer in hell forever. That is not a spirit of Christ. That's an anti-Christ spirit. That is a horrible spirit. And that's, it's evil pure evil to wish that upon anybody, especially your brothers and sisters who already have received the Holy Spirit. So people should not be going around 
Uh, and don't receive that. If you get those kind of comments from people, sometimes they can affect you. And you go, what, what do I do with this? You know? <laughs> and there was one comment I got from somebody and I was just leaving a comment on someone else's page. And I was just like, wow, you know, where's the love in that? And I know there's trolls and I know there's people that go on there and just say things to say things. But I know there's also people trying to convince you that you're, you're wrong, but where's the spirit behind that? Um, do so in love. If you really believe that we're in error, do so in love and not out of pride. Do so in scripture, the word of God, prove it, prove it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Cause I have a lot of scriptures that prove what I believe. And I haven't heard hardly any that prove what you believe. In fact, you take a lot of them out of context. And I know I'm probably going to make people mad making this video, but I'm tired of it. I keep getting comments from people just randomly and it's, it's the enemy attacking. He's using you to attack the body of Christ. And if you are a child of God, you need to ask him to give you a heart for your brothers and sisters. Because um, constantly attacking your brothers and sisters is not, is not what God wants from you. It's not. He wants you to show him compassion and love and um, desiring them to grow in the Lord not constantly tearing down the brothers and sisters who do absolutely love the Lord. And I'm not saying you don't love the Lord. I'm just saying, check your attitude <laughs> and wishing your brothers and sisters ill, <laughs> knowing, thinking that you're somehow going to be better than us and somehow survive. It just doesn't make any sense. And um, the word of God does not tell us Hey, be prepared because you're going to have to do all this. If he put all of that revelation in there, I think he would have told his church, when this time comes, start preparing yourself uh, spiritually. Start preparing yourself physically. Start preparing yourself <laughs> in this way and that way. Make sure you are ready to be tormented and tortured. And, you know, he didn't tell us to prepare food and stockpile and go out into the woods and hide ourselves you know, he says he will protect Israel. That's who he says he'll protect, Israel. Last time I checked, this is not Israel. <laughs> There's a lot of places in this world that have nothing to do with Israel. And another thing I was thinking is if I was believing in um, any other view besides the pre-trib, I would think, I would think maybe the tribulation has already beginning, already begun. Right now we're just seeing like, birth pangs but with how much is going on in the world you could begin to think oh no it started already you know <laughs> if if you're not looking for anything to happen for the tribulation to start and you're thinking that like your view is not that the antichrist needs to be revealed to kick off the and see i don't know fully all the views very well but what i do know is i get a lot of hate mail <laughs> That's basically what I'm saying. And um, I feel like it's it's not Holy Spirit driven. He wants us to show love to others. And it's not that I don't love those people. It's hurtful. And sometimes it's very frustrating because we're going along and we're already struggling because there's so much going on. There's so many things happening in this world. And if you see all of it, all the floods and disasters and volcanoes and and UFO things and all the, you know, just death of animals on the planet. And um, not to mention the, the, the horrible evil behind abortion and, and sex trafficking and, and all of that. And then just pure satanic things happening in this world. And there's just beyond I feel like our eyes have been opened just recently and I think as a as the body of Christ I think the Lord was was keeping that from us a lot so that we could live godly and peaceable lives you know and um but something broke free this last year and I feel like he's allowing us to see these things so he, we can understand what's about to come and it's important for us to know what's about to come and to not 
bury our heads in the sand and act like nothing's happening right now because there is so much happening in so many parts of the world. Um, famines and pestilence and, and even just the strange sounds people have been hearing around the world, booms just from nowhere that can't be explained or, or shakings of buildings in, um, and in China. Like I saw that video of a, a building just started shaking. There was no reports of earthquakes or anything. I mean, these kinds of things are happening all over the world. He, he will shake everything that can be shaken. People need to look up and be ready. And I posted that dream from my, I believe it was a dream from my, my little baby this morning. Um, I was talking to her again this, uh, just a little bit ago when I was getting ready to put her down for a nap. And I just said, what happened to the trees? I just wanted to see if she would talk about it again. She kept saying, the trees all falling down, the trees all falling down, the trees all falling down. And I was like, well, the trees aren't falling down. And then I said, what else? And she goes, we fly. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. That's, she didn't say that last night. She's like, go up. This time she said fly. And then she put her hands up like this, like wings. She was like, wings. And we fly. And she was just talking a little bit more about it. And it was just the way she was doing it. It was, didn't make me think that it was just some made up thing for her. She was just recounting what she remembered. And so I thought that was really cool. And I was blessed by that. I felt like the Lord was just speaking to me and I wanted to bless you guys with it. So anyway, this video is pretty much just a bunch of rambling <laughs> about my thoughts that have been going on for a while now and I just haven't had any time at all to make a video. So I just wanted to come on and do that and um, I pray for each and every one of you. I pray that you are blessed. I pray that the Lord will keep you and watch over you and um, also if you're not saved, please um, please do so now. Um, I will have the salvation message below. I also have several videos about it. And so please watch those. There, there's one that's like seven minutes long. It's not that long, but you can be secure in where you're going today. <laughs> Just watch it. There's also so many messages out there from other believers and, um, for you to know what to do but just admit that you're a sinner believe that Jesus died for you was buried and rose again and confess it with your mouth to him to just confess hey Lord I do believe <laughs> you know come me in my life it's pretty simple it's, it doesn't have to be complicated anyway so there you go. There's that. And also, I just wanted to um, remind you guys of a video that I posted a while back. It keeps coming back to my mind, and I feel like we're at the home stretch of it. And so I gave, I wrote, uh, I presented this um, thing that happened to me at Walmart a while back, and then what the Lord spoke to me about it after the fact. So it was called the Forerunners or something like that. There's Forerunners on the on the thumbnail. If you get a chance, go back and watch that. I feel like we're on the the last part of that, you know, wanting to go to the right or the left, but he's stay on the straight path because he's taking us home. And that's where I feel like we are right now. I really just feel like the Lord keeps telling me that's where you are. So um, anyway, be blessed. Um, I hope that this video was not annoying to you and that it was actually helpful. <laughs> and I pray that you all... Be blessed and have a wonderful day. And I obviously just need to talk. I've been talking to, to kids for, for weeks now, you know. So <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Be blessed. Talk to you. Bye.